Hey, Benny. Hey, Deborah. Hi, Matt. Good evening. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? <laughs> Just fine. You snuck in the back door. <laughs> Boy, everything changes every minute, doesn't it? Fast days. <laughs> Fast days. It's like you have to be at your computer ready to send another email or update or recreational spaces, opening, closing, and oy, crazy. Now, Penny, I see that you are muted. Uh, are you okay? That's because I didn't want you to hear me. As okay. I, as Just want to make sure. I want to make sure I wasn't muting you on my end. No, I muted myself so that um, you wouldn't hear the clinking of um, ice cubes. Okay, thank you. Hi, Valerie. Hi. Hi, Valerie. Hi, Penny. How are you guys? Good. <laughs> I, How are you? Good. Good. Look at the same background as when we when we talked an hour and a half ago. Yep. <laughs> We're all in the same, same place. Um, I was just looking over the uh, the governor's order, um, and I guess we should probably take out our stay at home because just just to make things clear. Yep. Is that what you were thinking? I saw that you called. I I took a nap. That's okay. I had a feeling you were uh, doing something <laughs> productive. That's very productive. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, is this a, uh, it looks like a different format. Oh, okay. I see. I just don't have my participants screen open here. Hey, Jamie. Oh, lost him. <laughs> I'm here. I'm just going to mute myself while we get ready. Sounds good. Hey, Jamie, you made it back. Yeah, sorry. Did everybody get the email that I sent a few minutes ago? Yep. Okay, awesome. Hey, Valerie. Hi, Peter. Deb, you look really comfortable. I do? <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel it. <laughs> no. How are you? Good. <laughs> How about you? Holding up. Good. You told Matt every minute things seem to change. Yeah. Oh, I'm Bobby. Hi there. Bobby, you got your red screen on. I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> <laughs> you have something over your camera? Uh, yep, like the cover. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there you are. <laughs> there we go. That'll work. Works every time. I was going to say, I love what you did with the place up there. <laughs> yeah, no, well. I have a 
red light, red light sale up there. Apparently so. Valerie, I still have your Tupperware containers too. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> no brownies for you guys for a while, I guess. No, no, we're on hold. All right. How are they? How's your crew doing? They're doing good. They're doing good. <clears throat> okay, good. Matt, are you going to want us to uh, mute ourselves, or are you going to mute us and unmute us? Um, if you want to mute yourselves, I, 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 <laughs> I gave you that power tonight. Okay. Hey, Chris. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, Matt. Kathy. Chief Benton, don't look now, but somebody's pointing a pistol at your head. <laughs> hey, uh, Chief Benton and Gleason, thanks to your crews for their work to assist in my neighborhood this afternoon or this morning rather with the surprise down tree that took down the power line. You're very welcome. There's different challenges every day, that's for sure. Wasn't wasn't a hint of breeze. I don't know what brought that tree <laughs> happened. But. Just gave it up. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody was happy with the quick work so, so. good.
Um, looks like we're still waiting for Caitlin. Um, is Penny, are you there? Okay. <laughs> Great. So I guess we'll just wait another minute. I sent uh, I sent Councillor Jordan a text to see if she was logging on, but I haven't haven't heard back. I don't know if, if Penny, if you've heard from Caitlin today. I have not. Sorry, I have not heard from Caitlin today. So. Um, I know she said something. I'm sure she. She knows because she sent an email along to both you and me, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll just wait another minute for her. Let me give her a text. Not that you're not important, Matt. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I'll take all the help I can get there. <laughs> <laughs> These days, every hand is available. <laughs> It was a good elbow, Penny. Good elbow cough. I haven't heard she hasn't sent anything back, so. Okay, um, well, we will get started. So I know there are a number of attendees also. Welcome to the April 1st, 2020 meeting, virtual meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Um, Deb, could you please do the roll call? Chairman Adams. Here. Councilor Devereaux. Here. Councilor Gabrielson? Here. Councilor Garvin? Here. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Councilor Penelope Jordan? Here. Councilor Straw? Here. Madam Chairman, you do have a quorum. Thank you. Um, so before we get started, Matt, just to clarify procedure for those attendees, um, do, do attendees have the ability to raise their hand again this evening? Um, if they have a question. Yes, if you uh, if you open up the participant uh, box on the bottom mm -hmm. and, and then you look at the panelists and uh, you should be able to uh, raise your hand uh, via that, I believe. Okay, I do see that we have a someone raising a hand now, so. Um, That's with the attendees, yep. Yes, so at this point, I did wanna open um, up public comment for items not on the agenda. Um, you can do that if you're an attendee by using the raise hand function and then Matt um, has the ability to call on you. If you could just state your name and address for the record, we do have Deb keeping a record this evening so that's important. And please do keep in mind um, that we do try to, to limit comments to three minutes per person just for efficiency. So I do see that we have one hand raised at the moment. Yes, first is uh, Jessica Simpson. Um, I re I'm sorry, I was just checking out that function. So I thought I clicked unraise hand. So no, I really don't have anything to say. I'm just curious about the discussion. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. you. And thank you for demonstrating how to use the function. Um, any other comment for items not on this evening's agenda? 
All right, I see no other hands raised. Um, so there is one item on the agenda for the evening. It is the proposed amendment to the um, emergency regulations that the council adopted on March 25th, 2020, um, pertaining to COVID-19 restrictions. Um, any comment on that item? The proposed regulations are posted on the website, so everyone should have had a chance to look at them. If not, you can look at them on the website right now. Um, but I would note that since those that proposal was drafted, Governor Mills did issue an order that supersedes um, our any stay-at-home order that we would put in place. So. Um, these, this proposal was drafted before that Governor Mills order would obviously take precedent. So any public comment on this agenda item, please go ahead and raise your hand if you do have comment. Okay. Hey, Caitlin. There are, there are no hands, Madam Chair. Yeah, I don't see any hands. All right. Um, so we'll move on to that agenda item. Um, and as I just noted, um, I had drafted that proposal. It was it was posted, um, but given the governor's order, it probably makes sense for the sake of um, clarity to remove paragraph two from the proposed amendment, which pertains to a stay at home order since um, Governor Mills order would supersede that. So. Um, Matt, do you have anything else before we get into this item, to, just to queue it up? Uh, the, the, uh, yes, th thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, you know, I do think I agree. I agree with you as well. I think the governor's order yesterday, uh, you know, filled in a lot of gray areas that we were looking at here locally. And uh, the one area that we we're looking at regarding this amendment, uh, speaking with staff today, was uh, related to. Um, on the short-term rental question, speaking with our code officer, the uh, the homestays, which have been uh, uh, currently not regulated by the ordinance, uh, there was concern that he was raising uh, that, that that may be uh, taking place within the market as well. The council wanted to take an action on that to, to ban them as well as the short-term uh, approach that's been taking place. Okay. Um, all right. Do we want to discuss that now or are we just going to put that in the queue? I think we'll put it in the queue. So okay. at the moment, I'd be looking for um, a motion so that we could begin discussion. Um, what I would propose is I, I'd be seeking a motion um, to accept the proposed amendments to the emergency regulations dated March 25th, 2020 of the town council, um, striking paragraph two from the document that's posted, but everything else as, as posted, as drafted. Um, or any other motion that a, that a counselor thinks is appropriate. Madam Chair, uh, uh, Councillor Garvin has his uh, hand up. Okay. Um, All right, go ahead, Councillor. For the purposes of this moving along, I would make a motion to accept the amendment as presented. And then I, I say that with the assumption that we're going to probably go through and have some other suggested amendments that we'll discuss and vote on. So rather than try and work those in now, the motion I'll make is just to um, accept the amendments as laid out in the agenda packet. Um, would that be with paragraph two or without? That would be the stay at home portion. I, I'm going to say just as is, and I'll explain that in a minute. Okay. Because I think I think I'll second that. I'll Great. second that. Can Great. I can I ask Jamie a question? Can you turn up your everybody else is really. Um, sure. um, uh, volume is up. I don't know if his volume is down. He's speaking very softly. Uh, I see. I had it. Is that better? Yes. Thank you. Sorry thank about you, that. Thank you. Remember, okay. some of us are old here. No, that was that was me. Uh, <laughs> tech error on my end. Sorry about that. 
Um, thank that, you. So, that's better though? That's better. Okay. Um, so let's open it up to discussion on the motion. Yes, Jamie, go ahead. So um, I, I think um, I, I'm not clear. I think yesterday the governor's order, in addition to covering everything that's laid out in in item number two, also addressed three and four, correct? All right, let's switch screens a little here. Because I, I think that, uh, and I'm not sure if it was a requirement or recommendation in the order that um, people coming either returning to Maine or coming from another state, if they're not from here, I believe that they were also um, encouraged to self-isolate for 14 days upon arrival and that all, um, all travel, um, particularly called out public transit and less for essential services um was was not allowed so um oh go ahead chris so um that was the that was the really odd thing for me with that order and um uh, matt or uh, the chief could perhaps talk to it more but my understanding is the order she issued only applied to people living in maine and doesn't apply to tourists or visitors who are uh passing through it all and i thought that i read on the uh, one of the news sites today that she said she was going to issue a subsequent order to address that, but I haven't heard that it's been issued as of yet. Um, but the, Jamie's point stands to the extent that she said, I'm about to issue something that covers this. It would obviate the need for three as well, if she actually does it. So. Um, Penny, go ahead. I had a, a similar statement as, as Chris that I didn't see how uh, it uh, explicitly um, addressed three, but I think she in, intended to, to some extent. And um, I think that if that's true and we look at what the um, enforcement is around, around that, then it says to me enforcement of people who don't self quarantine under the states is uh, what a thousand dollar fine or whatever. So we then get into enforcement of that. But I agree she didn't explicitly state it. Um, right. I'm just trying to pull up her. her, her, her right now. Yeah. I just been looking at it and I did not read it to actually address paragraph um, three. Right, I didn't either. Right, she, but she did reference it and she stated that they would be encouraging people to self quarantine um, and advising them of the need for that. So, I mean, she was pretty, she also did make a comment that um, any municipality is free to impose more restrictive requirements so we could go ahead with that if we wanted to um but just that hers established the baseline um and given that we are a community where a lot of people come from out of state have a second home here maybe want to visit here it may make more sense for our community than others to have that sort of regulation be very explicit Um, yes, Penny. Yes, I agree with that, that um, because of the fact that we probably have a lot more, uh, well, uh, Scarborough, many coastal towns have an influx of people that we, three becomes very important. Yeah. Um, two, paragraph two, though, I do think just for the sake of clarity, um, because it does go a little bit broader than hers, it probably makes more sense to um, 
to just take that out entirely. Did you have another comment, Penny? Yeah, I, it, when you started going to two, um, um, I, why would you say take that out entirely? Because I thought it had some essence in it that was really important. Um, and um, especially um, on the second page, um, where it talks about uh, individuals seeking relief from domestic violence. I, I actually would say to the extent um, that any person who's leaving their home for personal safety um, should be um, allowed to do that. I think that needs to be stated. So people, why would you think that it, that paragraph becomes unimportant? Not unimportant, but that we, that that part may go broader than the, the governor's regulations. Well, we have to follow the governor's regulations anyhow. Right, so, so I didn't want something in there that contradicts the governor's regulations. Makes it confusing to people. Right. Um, yes, Valerie. Um, I agree with Penny. I like that um, provision in there. The only thing that I see that might be a problem is at the very last, um, at the end there where it says, uh, uh, six feet from any other person with whom they do not share a household and abide by the 10 person gathering limitation established by the governor's executive order. Uh, that, ex that was changed, wasn't it, under this new order? It's not a 10 person um, gathering limitation. It's a shelter in place. Right. Right. So yeah. That would have to be removed. Yeah, that would definitely have to be removed. Um, Chris, go ahead. Yeah, so I would be in favor of striking all of two. I understand the concerns, uh, but if Matt, if you were to scroll down to section five um, or V of the governor's order. So she says preemption, this order preempts any local ordinance or emergency order of the same subject matter that is less restrictive than or otherwise inconsistent with this order. So to the extent that we're trying to do anything that is less restrictive than what she did, uh, we, uh, it sounds like she's saying it preempts it, or at least that's my understanding of what that says. So for that reason, rather than try to uh, thread the needle and figure out what we can do, what we can't do, what is, what isn't, I would just strike two. Um, yeah. Um, Jamie, what do you think about that amendment to your motion? I, I agree with striking two. Okay. Yeah. My, my, my question was just whether or not three and four also needed to be, but um, I've, I've been going back and looking and um, you are all correct that um, she hadn't gone so far as to specifically include the out of state provision in this specific order. Um, I suspect that that will come soon, so. Yeah, um, okay. So are you, are you formally amending your motion or are we still discussing amendment? Can I, can I jump in real quick? I just, I just ask as we're looking at these issues that we remember from an enforcement perspective of what the expectations are gonna be on law enforcement for this. These are obviously challenging times to begin with. So overly complex or duplicitous um, in actions are gonna be very difficult for us to enforce. I know it sounds good in, um, in the writing things up, but sometimes it boots on the ground from the perspective of officers. I mean, we're always going out armed with discretion, common sense and good judgment. And a lot of times it's gonna be about education and voluntary compliance. So I, I definitely don't want to get something really restrictive here where we're mirroring a police state I and mean, officers are out there patrolling, but I just want you to remember to listen or, or look at it from our perspective of what are we actually going to be able to enforce? How are we going to be stopping cars and things like that? 
at, at the same time, while trying to limit exposure for my officers, they're still out there on the front lines. So I'm trying not to encourage them to have any unnecessary interactions. Uh, a lot of things we're doing by telephone, from distancing, from the microphone, the cruiser. Um, so and just uh, I caution you to look at it from an enforcement perspective, taking into consideration the safety of officers, as well as citizens who they could be seating with. It, yeah, Jamie, go ahead. Um, I appreciate that perspective, Chief. And I think what I took away from yesterday, I watched um, you know, the governor's news conference yesterday when rolling out this order. And what I took away was a similar message from, from her um, in that you know, we're not looking to create a police state, but also that um, law enforcement agencies should feel like they do have perhaps a little bit more direction and a little bit more explicit authority should they feel they need to use it. So still well within your discretion and your officers on, on whether or not that, um, that enforcement um, action is needed, but where it may have been a little bit more um, you know, fuzzy based on you know, the, the previous week's you know, orders and, and direction that it, it seemed a little bit clearer to me yesterday. That's, that's what I took away. Right. And I think also, you know, part of this is that we, we can't necessarily enforce everything and we won't necessarily enforce it. But if you can say to someone who is blatantly violating, you are violating an order, um, and that is punishable by the law, especially the governor's order, it's a classy misdemeanor if you were to violate the governor's order. For ours, I, I did include in the proposal um, a fine. I know other municipalities have fines. Um, but the important thing is just for people to understand that this is not a recommendation, but but an, an amendment to our laws. Um, but Chief, was there something in particular about this proposal that you were concerned about? No, no, I'm just, we're getting a lot of calls since, since yesterday. I mean, our calls have probably gone up significantly today with people's interpretation of those and expectations upon what the police department can and cannot enforce. So I just want to be clear for everybody. Um, there are people who see this from different perspectives and there's very strict perspectives. So we're getting a lot of, uh, a lot of calls from everything from CMP workers driving down the road, doing work to, um, you know, people walking together. So I just want to be clear for the public what we, uh, what we can and cannot do. Um, Chris, go ahead. So under the, the same argument, basically, I would also strike three. Uh, prior to yesterday, I would have obviously kept two and three. Um, but to the extent, I think it was the Press Herald had some Q&A of what it says, and it was something where at least the Press Herald was saying, if I recall correctly, that the governor was going to require people to quarantine or something like that coming from out of state. If she is actually going to be imposing something like that the next day or two, I'd rather just have, uh, as the chief had noted, uh, rather than ha have people from surrounding towns all trying to figure out how all this plays out, if we just had a uniform regulation from Augusta, I'd prefer that. So I'd hold off on three, give her a day or two to take action. And it stinks to call another meeting. It also stinks if uh, we put it off and then um, more days go by. But uh, I, I'd hold off on three uh, under the expectation that Augusta is going to be taking action on three, at least if my reading of the Press Herald was correct. Of course, I, that could have been them being optimistic as well. Right. Yeah, she did make a statement to that effect, um, but it was unclear what the result would be. Um, we do have a couple of meetings coming up that we could easily tack on another meeting to if necessary. So I don't know what other counselors think about, about that um, striking two, three, and four, and then we would just sort of limit our discussion here to the park. Any thoughts on that? Um, Valerie and then Chris? I. Um I like three. I think it's important. We have so many people returning from um, out of state right now. And a lot of them are um, uh, people who are 65 and older. I think it's really important that they quarantine. What if the governor doesn't put something like this into place? Uh, there's a reason we had it in here. We can always take it out next week if she does put something in place. But I think we really need a quarantine. Chris? So I guess uh, 
I, I would be okay getting rid of three so long as we have a meeting scheduled for this Friday, basically giving her till Friday to take action. And if she fails to take any effective action, at that point, we would then take action. But to the extent everyone else wants to go with three right now, um, I'm fine with that as well. Yeah, I mean, I guess the, the alternative is we could include three and then uh, if she does in the next couple of days promulgate an order that addresses that, we can um, remove this from ours on, um, we could maybe do like a, a tack on a meeting to our April 8th scheduled budget meeting um, to look at that and maybe take it off. Um, I, I'm, I don't know. I mean, we're all operating in uncertain times. To me, it seems like there, this is something that requires urgent action, and it's been a little disappointing to see from the higher ups that we haven't had swifter action. Um, Caitlin and then Penny. I was just going to say we might as well keep it in. And I mean, it doesn't even need to come out. If she decides to put the same thing into place, then we're already ahead of the game. Penny, go ahead. I think as I listened to her yesterday, um, she was um, strongly encouraging people who are coming into the state to self-quarantine. So I, I'm in favor of leaving it in um, at this point in time. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any more discussion on paragraphs two, three, and four? before we may want to move on to discussing them. Matt, yes. I'm sure, sorry, I, I, for some reason I can't do the raise hand function on, on our end. Uh, as the host, I guess I'm disabled from that. But uh, the one question that comes to mind and the chief may uh, raise this as well is it's enforcement uh, when it comes to uh, folks who have traveled from away and trying to to enforce that as a, as a provision in the, in the order and actually having the knowledge to to be able to act on that. And that's the one area of concern that I would, that I would find. Um, but I agree with you as well. You, the council has a huge challenge because of the fact that uh, the state's order doesn't say anything to it at the present time. And uh, I, I'd like to see them occupy that space more than us because they may have a better opportunity to, to provide guidance on that. Uh, Jamie, yes. Uh, so two things. First, in direct response to that, I. I agree with all of these that enforcement is going to be an issue. I think it, it becomes all the more important uh, for us and staff and frankly, everybody in the community um, to help raise awareness of what the measures are that we've put in place um, to help spread the word. And, you know, it, it, you know, we're largely hoping for voluntary compliance with that. And, um, you know, if we get, I don't know what percentage of it is, but if, if, if we get half or two thirds or three quarters of people that say, yep, okay, I'll do that, then that's better than 0% of those people. So I'm kind of less worried about, you know, going out and citing people and writing citations and stuff like that for the folks that fall outside of compliance versus, you know, having a good firm and clearly communicated message that um, hopefully most people will in fact follow. So that's first point. Um, the second point I wanted to raise, um, uh, Chairman Adams, just in, re in response to your question, if anybody have anything else with two, three, four. My only question with four, and it, it's no big deal, I, I, I guess I really don't, it doesn't matter to me one way or the other, but the way we worded this previously um, was more in the affirmative of what was permitted, whereas most of these other things we are um, taking more of the what is prohibited um, <laughs> language. So, um, and as far as consistency with the governor's order yesterday, I think she laid out travel of this type is, um, is not allowed unless it's for this purpose, so. Yeah, I, I was gonna mention that as well, that the governor's order does explicitly address travel. So it may make sense for us to take out four with two. Um, and also, just again on the on the point about enforcement, I know I think in our in our culture and in this country, we tend to think about laws as things that must be enforceable, but it's not unheard of to have a law 
that doesn't necessarily have a penalty and is more um, to encourage behavior rather than to punish non-compliance. Um, Chris, go ahead. Uh, so I, I would move that we amend the uh, current motion to strike numbered paragraphs two and four. Is there a second? Jamie? I'll second. Okay. Um, all right, let's, uh, any discussion on the um, amendment before we vote on that? Um, Jamie and Chris, do you just have your hands up from before? Okay. Uh, so we'll have to do this with, with Deb, I think, calling through. So all in favor of the amendment? Would you like me to do a roll call vote? Yes, please. Okay. And just to remind folks that are tuning in that may not know, the council rules, rules provide for a roll call vote um, in alphabetical order of the council with the chairman uh, voting last. So that's why we're going in this order. Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Garvin? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Adams? Yes. The amendment passes seven yeas. Thank you. Um, okay, so moving on to the next portion, there were two more pieces that are new. Um, the part, one is the proposed closure of the park to public motor vehicle traffic, and the other is the enforcement provision. Um, discussion on those points. No. Uh, Jamie, yes, go ahead. Um, I think we should amend the language presented here to uh, close the park completely. And I regrettably feel that way. Penny? Um, I agree with Jamie. That's where I was headed. Um, anyone else have thoughts on that in the council? Um, Caitlin and then Valerie. Would that repeat the language of allowing businesses to operate that are essential and all of that stuff as well? Just close it to foot traffic and motor vehicle traffic. Is that what you're proposing? Is that a question for, for Jamie? For whoever, yeah, whoever is proposing changing the language. Um, Valerie, do you mind if Jamie replies to that before we go ahead? Thanks. Um, yeah, my my recommendation would be to close it to all um, non-staff or other essential personnel operating in the park. Okay, go ahead, Valerie. I I agree. I think we need to close it, um, as Jamie said, to um, all non-essential people. Um, we need to close it completely. Matt, I, I was going to say, Matt. Um, has some insight on this, I think, from other municipalities in Cumberland County. Do you want to? Sure, just a, uh, one question regarding the, the motion to amend it. With that, uh, we do have uh, one, two, four different tenants that are in the in the park at the present time. And would that, would the order include them uh, as well as uh, uh, in, you know, in the ban or in the closure? Um, right. I think what Jamie was proposing was just that uh, the park be closed to the public, right? But that those businesses that are essential and operating can continue to do so. Is that right? Right. So if so, whether or not they're in the park or not, they they should be currently designated as either essential or non-essential businesses. Okay. So regardless of their location. So if they are an essential business and are permitted to continue operating, and that's the place where they operate, then they should continue to be able to do that. Um, but for anyone else that's not uh, 
town staff or um, a, a, has otherwise specific need to be there. Um, that's my, and I, I don't think we've actually made a motion yet, but I'm happy to okay. I'm happy to move that as a, an amendment. <laughs> Um, okay. Do you just want to clarify for for Deb um, taking notes what the amendment is, and then we can look for a, a second. I move that we amend the order uh, to um, for paragraph eight uh, that Fort Williams Park shall be closed uh, to all members of the public, with the exception of uh, all, all of the all of the exceptions that are listed here, essential personnel. Okay, uh, is there a, se a second for that amendment? I see Chris and Penny have their hands up. I don't know if those I'll, are- I'll second, I'll okay. second it. Um, discussion on the amendment, Chris. Um, if push came to shove, I would vote yes on the amendment. Um, in saying so, uh, I'm extremely cognizant of the fact that for the north, uh, what are we, the northeastern corner of town, this is our local park. If you live on the southwestern side of town, you have Great Pond. If you live on the southeastern, uh, I, I mean, we, we have hundreds of acres in town of open space for people to use, but Fort Williams is the section that for the northeastern part of town is in walking distance, and that stinks. Uh, that said, this weekend when I, I was closely monitoring the park, for the most part, people were, were uh, maintaining physical distance. Um, but I did see uh, out-of-state license plates from at least seven or eight different states. So it, it, yes, we, it is a town park. Yes, it is used by us as residents as our local park that we go to, but it has for purposes of this, uh, pandemic that we're in the middle of, it's become an attractive nuisance in the sense that it is really attractive and it is drawing people from a way that are coming to visit it still. And although we want it to just be uh, used for public local park purposes, so people have the ability to go out and walk and mental health, um, it, it, I don't know how we can, we can achieve that balance. And as I said before, it's the I don't want uh, perfect to be the, the enemy of getting anything done here. Uh, the only thing I might throw out would be perhaps we would sit, and I don't know if it's even feasible, say we leave it open from sun, uh, sunrise to like 9 a.m. so locals can go for a walk during that period of time or from like 5 p.m. until sunset. Um, but again, I, I don't want to try to slice and dice it if it prevents us from doing something effective. Um, but it would be with a very, very heavy heart that I would vote yes on this. Jamie and then Caitlin. Thanks. Um, as I said, I, it really um, pains me um, to to make this motion, um, but I do so, uh, you know, after a lot of considered thought. Um, specifically, you all saw um, my request to the manager uh, that we consult with uh, both county and state emergency management agencies uh, for their professional recommendation. And uh, at least the response we received from the county was a recommendation to close. Um, I've spoken with um, a medical professional, a doctor who also believes uh, that the facility should be closed, um, simply based on the number of people that um, have potential to congregate there. Like Chris, I was there twice over the weekend, um, uh, multiple times each day. I uh, shared with you all my observations and some photographs of what I saw and, uh, you know, like Chris, for the most part, I think people are practicing um, pretty good adherence to the social distancing and physical distancing uh, guidance. However, um, if you listen to yesterday's uh, uh, COVID-19 task force uh, uh, update from Washington, both Drs. Fauci and Burks indicated how these next two weeks are really the most critical we've seen during this time uh, in terms of having any hopes of short circuiting uh, to the degree possible, the continued spread of, of this um, pandemic. And, uh, you know, it's it, it just, it, it, this is not a place like other open space in town where you might have just a handful of people gathered um, or people that are out on a Greenbelt trail that, you know, 
you know, one or two people might be crossing paths with one another in the course of their, you know, hike over a mile or two on our green belt trails. This is a place where people are specifically going for the specific purpose of, uh, uh, you know, being in a, in a dedicated space. And as big as that space is, I just don't feel it's something that we can reasonably um, have uh, people uh, fully adhering to the guidance that's been put out there. And, you know, again, for the reasons of the specific um, urgency around these next couple of weeks, um, I, I, I just can't see how it makes sense to keep it open. I wanna say that up until this point, we've been operating um, with similar guidance, uh, for, you know, from uh, emergency management officials and so on and so forth. That guidance has changed slightly uh, in my view in the last couple of days. And so it's with that change in guidance that I've come around to this opinion. Thank you. Caitlin, go ahead. I was gonna say I'm more on Chris's side of things. It's really a tough decision to close it to even foot traffic. I would think a lot of those homes over on that side of town are so close together in those neighborhoods that this gives them a, a spot to walk to and eliminating vehicle traffic I think comes cuts down tremendously on who can actually go to the fort I mean people would have to be getting their exercise to get there if they don't live nearby and so I would hope that by taking away vehicle traffic you get more to the point of like it being the neighborhood park but as like Chris said I would if everybody else I can I can vote that way as well. It's just it seems like a really tough decision to take that space away from all those those people on that side of town. Um, Jeremy, move your hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, I I guess I I'm kind of in line with where where Chris and Caitlin are on this. I feel um, I could definitely support closing the park to vehicular traffic. Uh, one of the things that I feel like we we lose um, with closing the park to pedestrian traffic is the ability to have people walking, particularly walking dogs, um, in a space where there is room for more social distancing on lawns and other maintained surfaces um, than there is room for available on the trails. And so I think you know, I, I'd be in favor of, of limiting or, or restricting vehicular access, but I, I feel like, um, you know, allowing pedestrian access into the park at the very least to provide those open spaces, especially with a new directive from the superintendent today, um, asking people not to make use of the, the school campus. Um, I, I feel like the only other remaining spaces in town that are sort of open, maintained spaces where you could walk a dog and kind of move farther away from people are, are really the town farm and, and Gull Crest. Um, and I think this just provides another good option for people who are in that, that part of town within walking distance of the fort. Valerie, go ahead. Okay, uh, first, first I'd like to address um, Jeremy's comments and Caitlin's about um, closing the park to vehicle traffic. Difficulty with that is there'll be cars parked on the streets. We're gonna have people parked on the streets. We're gonna have an enforcement issue. We're gonna have people parking in neighborhoods. It's gonna make it very difficult. We also have porta potties that need to be cleaned. There's um, fences, gates that people touch. Uh, it, it seems like it's too, there's just too much uh, for us to, to monitor. And if we really look at, um, you know, the governor has ordered the closing of um, state parks and state beaches, which has been really difficult for us. Um, people were using um, Crescent Cove, walking on the beach, they were socially distancing, it was great. But once they closed those state beaches and parks, now we have a unique situation with um, Fort Williams. It's such a, um, high profile park, so many people. We get more tourists at Fort Williams than many of the state parks that have been closed by the governor. I think our order needs to be consistent and we need to think about um, safety of, of our residents and visitors. The other issue is um, we've 
taken, we've closed the library, we closed the pool, we closed town hall, but yet we're having people staff Fort Williams. What about our employees at Fort Williams? We're allowing them to be in harm's way. And the police, they're having, they'd have to drive through, they'd have to monitor. We're putting them not only in harm's way, but an, another added um, dimension to their job right now to police Fort Williams, to police cars parked on the road. And I think that's too much to ask of them right now. One of the things I wanna remind everyone is that this is temporary. We're not talking about doing this for the whole year. We're, I'm hoping we're gonna look at this and say, uh, our, our town council meeting on May 4th, we're gonna look at, look at it and see if we can open the park back up. So this is temporary. And I think that we need to be assertive. We've, we've heard from medical professionals. We've heard the facts. We've looked at the science behind this. And I think that we really, really need to be assertive, especially in the next couple of weeks, because if we can get that curve to flatten a little, then we can open the park sooner. So I, I hate to close the park. I love using the park, but I feel like it's gonna be in the best interest of everyone if we go ahead and close it right now. Um, Penny, I don't see your hand, but I thought you had it up before. Is that, did you take it down on purpose? Uh, Valerie made my point, so. Okay. So Jamie, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I just, you know, in regard to um, the point being made about the schools having closed and this further limiting space and all that kind of stuff, that's the very reason why we need to be doing this. Um, not that many people are driving to the schools. Uh, the schools are a place where, um, you know, people are, uh, especially younger folks are, are congregating and still playing and recreating and things like that. And so, um, yes, via, you know, limiting vehicular traffic would, would, you know, certainly reduce the number, but it doesn't effectively solve the problem. Um, and uh, so I think, I think the fact that the schools closed only, only, serves to reinforce the need to close the park, not the other way around. Um, I, I would just say too that there are still plenty of places in Cape Elizabeth where people can get out, you know, exercise, run, walk their dogs. Um, you know, I uh, was reminded uh, by the town planner earlier today about the changes we made to the dog ordinance um, and all of the places that are still, you know, places you can take and walk your dog. Um, all of which, as a reminder, folks should um, be exercising uh, all of the all the rules laid out with that ordinance about voice control and and uh, within sight and on leash where appropriate. But um, you know, as Councilor Devereaux said, this is hopefully just temporary. But it's I think a very important and needed step um, for us to to really um, do our part um, in these next several weeks. Chris. Yeah, so uh, basically, uh, Valerie and Jamie make uh, excellent points and it boils down to, it, it highlights how as much as we'd like to try to uh, craft something that somehow keeps the park accessible, um, end of the day, uh, the, the, the better course of action is to close it, unfortunately. But again, just to reiterate Jamie's point, there's Robinson Woods, there's Goldcrest, uh, there's the town farm, um, I don't know if Charles Jordan Road is a public road. I've always kind of assumed it is. Yes. Uh, yeah, so that's, I mean, you go down there and it's like you're, you're in the middle of nowhere. There's, there's not a soul if there aren't too many people walking down there these days. So there, there are hundreds of acres in town for people to go out to. Um, so I, I would just urge people to, uh, to take advantage of that. And to, uh, the one aspect I did want to point out is, yes, we are talking about a temporary closure. And it shouldn't keep us from voting to close it, but in doing so, we do need to be cognizant of the fact that th there's also people's mental health during this time period. Um, I know I personally am incredibly stressed and anxious with everything that's going on right now. And we're town counselors. This is a really, really difficult situation that everyone's in. And having that out outdoor area it is important to be to, for people, and I would encourage people to continue to get out, go to Robinson Woods, do everything else to look out for themselves and keep themselves healthy. But I'm recognizing that even as I say that I'm going to be voting to close the park. 
Yes, Matt. Madam Chair, th thank you, uh, if, if I may. Uh, we did uh, this afternoon, I know Chief Fenn, myself, and uh, Principal Shedd, uh, Superintendent Wolfram, and Jeff Thorek, the uh, athletic director, uh, spoke for at length about the challenges at the school campus because, uh, you know, and it wasn't in a punitive fashion, but it was more along the lines of people trying to, and I think they try to do it at the fort as well, uh, practice social distancing as best as they can, but you end up coming with a larger number. And you may have, you know, the, the rule or the desire is to have 10 or less, but when you have 14 here or, or seven here and seven there, all of a sudden now you have 14. And uh, that is the one challenge. Speaking with the county, they talked about it as well. Uh, people may have the best of intentions, but, uh, you know, talking with uh, Joe Chapel from Cumberland County EMA, he said, you, know, you still end up with a critical mass. And so your exposure level is greater and greater as it goes. And uh, so that's a big concern. And uh, also looking at the surrounding properties uh, in other communities, uh, I know South Portland is monitoring theirs greatly. I think last weekend, quite honestly, we got away with, uh, got away with it a bit because the weather was not exactly what we anticipated on Saturday. Cause I know uh, you almost had a quorum of counselors down there it seemed at times cause we, we were all down checking on the fort uh, to see what the value of the volume was. So uh, I, I thought that the measures we took last weekend helped, uh, but I think, uh, you know, when it comes down to it, there is just that there is that high level of exposure. And uh, there are so many challenges. If you try to get cute and shut off the lots, then you're just gonna have traffic going in and out. And you are gonna look at the neighborhoods around getting, I know Chief Fenn and I talked about this as well as uh, other staff about the challenges of the neighborhoods surrounding it. Are you going to make that all no parking? So there really is no great answer outside of the challenge and the burden that you're trying to lift. And I know we've, we've all looked at it to try to find the best way. And uh, I, th I think the council, you know, you're definitely trying to go in the right direction to do what you feel is best. And uh, it isn't permanent, as you say, it, you're looking at a temporary, temporary solution here that hopefully will help us get through a, a much better time in the near future. Right. And when I initially drafted this amendment, I, it was also painful to me to think about closing the park entirely. And it seems like it's such a big space that if we closed it just to traffic, that people could safely use it. But I think Valerie's point is a good one that this, this is temporary. We do unfortunately need to make sacrifices right now. And, you know, people are definitely encouraged to get outside, but maybe walk around your neighborhood instead of going somewhere else to be outdoors and, you know, use the spaces that are accessible to you. And there are some concerns, like we heard um, regarding the school earlier, that people were getting together and not being safe. So it does become very difficult to monitor that sort of thing. Uh, Jeremy, go ahead. So I, I guess I, I want to, preface this by saying um, over the last few weeks I've been out quite a bit on trails and at the park um, and by and large the behavior that I've seen people exhibiting has been exemplary um, and I had come into this meeting hoping that we might be able to actually even just continue to maintain the park open um, as is I think I have reluctantly come around to the position of, of agreeing with the rest of the counselors who've spoken thus far on um, seeing the necessity of, of temporarily closing the park to all traffic. I think one thing that I would like to, to add um, is uh, just a, a clear um, a, a time frame element, which is not in the current order. Um, I know the governor's order um, specified an end date, I believe at the end of the month or on May 1st, I can't remember exactly what the date was. Um, and I think that just helping put putting a time frame in there to convey, I, I hope people will recognize that this is a temporary order that is put in place to deal with a, uh, a, a transient situation. But um, I just like to make sure that we, we put some something in there. Um, with a timestamp on it, um, whether it's in part of number eight or or just part of the order. Uh, Jamie, so, yes. Yeah, I guess I I looking back at the document, I I had assumed but didn't realize that 
because I remember last week our action was through May 1st. Uh, and I, did that not carry over here? Or? Yeah, I was just looking that that was intended to carry over because this is just supposed to be an amendment to that order. Um, but I think that was probably a, a typo on my part, not somehow getting that in here. Okay. So we can clean that up, but yeah, but my assumption was that this was all till May 1st or until otherwise acted upon. Right. That, that would be the intent. It's just to amend that prior order. Um, so any discussion on this amendment before uh, we call a vote? Nope. Um, Deb, do you mind please? Oh, I'm sorry. Valerie. I just have a, I have, oh, I'm sorry. You're calling Valerie. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jamie, or go ahead. Um, it's it's the prerogative of the chair. I, I, I do see that there are three hands raised in the attendees area. Um, I, I know we've received a lot of feedback in the form of email, personal conversations, uh, social media feedback, things like that. I don't know if because because people are here on the meeting and well, while we opened up discussion earlier, I, I'm not sure if people were clear ab about discussion about anything related to this item or, or maybe weren't clear about wanting to voice their opinion on Fort Williams, which is what we got into. But anyway, I'll leave it to the chair, but just I, I do note that there are people that have hands raised. Um, I see that. Um, Valerie, do you have a, a comment before we move on to that? Yeah, just a quick comment. Um, I just want to echo um, Jeremy's thoughts and uh, about all the people in Cape who have been um, really doing a great job of practicing social distancing. They've been walking their dogs, keeping six feet apart from other people. And we've received a lot of emails from people and I, I want them to know that um, I've read what they've said, I've heard it, I believe all the council has, and this isn't a reaction out of fear, but it's based on looking at the science, listening to health professionals, and looking at the facts. We, we've all been very diligent about that, and I, I really want um, our residents to know that we take that really, uh, we take that commitment very seriously, and this isn't just a knee-jerk reaction, it's something that um, we've all thought a lot about. So um, remember that this is, this is temporary. Okay. Um, so in response to your point, Jamie, I think what may make more sense, uh, I do recognize that people may not have understood that this was the, their opportunity to speak on this item earlier. I, I think for the sake of efficiency, it makes sense to keep moving through the the amendment and the motion, and then we could take some comment before finally voting on the motion. Um, but uh, any more discussion from the council on this particular item before we take a vote on the amendment? No, okay, so Deb, could you please um, call through? The roll call for this amendment uh, to number eight of the draft, which would be amending that first uh, sentence at Fort Williams Park shall be closed to members of the public. Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Garvin? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Councilor Caitlin Jordan? You're on mute. Sorry, I was on mute, yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Adams? Yes. It passes unanimously. Okay. Um, so there was one more proposed amendment which was adding an enforcement provision. Um, did anyone want to amend that or are we prepared to vote on the motion as amended at this point? Yes, Jamie. Uh, just so I'm clear, you, so you're talking about number nine, which has already been added in? Correct. Okay. 
Um, Chris, did you have a hand up? In yeah. Uh, so uh, to the, before we vote on the overall as amended, uh, just the exhibit A, uh, number one, um, I don't know if this is just me expressing frustration or if anyone else has any thoughts on this or whatnot. Uh, so it's, it sounds like um, uh, a number of healthcare providers in town in the greater Portland area have uh, very uh, reasonably and rationally recognized that uh, non-essential medical uh, operations and services are best um, put off at this point in time. Um, so I'll just use this as an example. Let's say uh, if you were a um, uh, plastic surgeon that does cosmetic surgery, uh, obviously that's not something that should be happening right now. Those resources need to be devoted towards dealing with uh, the, the pandemic. Um, Right now, uh, and the problem is all of these, and this is the problem with any type, whenever government tries to get involved in this stuff, all of these exceptions are big enough to drive a truck through. And to the extent that there are healthcare providers or uh, people that uh, purport to be healthcare pro providers, I don't even know what that definition encompasses. Um, if, I, if I'm selling magic beans and I claim that they cure people's um, uh, gout, does that mean that I get to continue to operate? I, I don't know how bro broad that is. But to the extent, extent that there are healthcare providers or healthcare operators who are providing services that are not kind of emergency or essential, right now they can just continue to operate under that exception, which stinks. And we're asking people to be reasonable. Um, do we look at uh, tightening that provision or do we just continue to just ask that these healthcare providers be reasonable and do the right thing and just hope for the best. So I would be comfortable tightening that um, because I think it's, it's concerning that um, being an essential business seems to have given a lot of businesses license to just continue operating as usual, but the purpose of them being open is so that they can provide essential services, not necessarily that they can continue to provide all services. And if you look at the governor's order, people are to stay at home unless they're accessing essential medical care, not just anything that might fall within the broad healthcare definition. So um, I don't know if we want to look at, at maybe tightening some of those up a little bit, um, just to, to specify that those, those businesses can continue to operate in the to the extent that they provide essential services, um, but that their sort of auxiliary operations are not included. Um, Valerie, go ahead. Uh, I, I agree that we should do that. The other point I wanted to make was something that Jamie brought up earlier is the homestay Airbnbs. I think we need to tighten that up also to make sure that that's included in our um, ban of Airbnbs or short-term rentals, I should say. Right. I think it was homestays. homestays. We haven't gotten into our new definitions yet. So. Um, okay, does anyone uh, have an amendment formulated? <laughs> Um, my one concern about doing that right now, sort of on the fly, is that I am cognizant of the governor's order, and I, I want to make sure that we're not contradicting that order in any way. We, you know, we are allowed to be more restrictive, but, but just that we're not being contradictory. Chris? Uh, so, um, with respect to the healthcare operations, what I'd like to see is uh, by our next meeting, which hopefully will be within seven days, uh, that we have some type of proposed, and I'm not volunteering to do this, by the way, <laughs> that perhaps the, uh, the, the chair <laughs> or the town manager could come up with some proposed language about how to tighten that up that um, we've kind of kind of uh, given a look at what the governor's done to make sure it's, uh, in, in the meantime, just I would just ask any healthcare uh, operations in town to please be reasonable. Um, Everyone's going through a hard time here. Everyone's businesses are, are being hurt. And please help be part of the solution, not the problem. Um, 
Right. And I think that goes for any business, you know, if you're engaged in construction and you're, you're doing something that's essential at this moment, then please, by all means do that. But, you know, I, we did get an email earlier about patio projects. That's, that's not something that we want to encourage people to engage in right now. That's not what we should be doing. Um, what are other counselors thoughts on, on maybe setting that aside for another meeting next week. Um, and I'm happy to, to take that on and look at her order and make sure that we're not contradicting it. Nods of agreement. Jamie, did you have a, a comment? No. Nope. Okay. Um, and then in terms of the homestay, um, did someone want to make that amendment? Or, or move that amendment, sorry. Uh, Jamie, yes. Um, well, I agree that we need a clarification, but I guess what I'm confused at, so what we've detailed is in this order is what our definition of essential business and organizations is. So if it's not something that's on here, then it, it, it's not included. I'm not, I'm not sure how, how this is a loophole actually. I, I, I The homestays? Yeah. Because. Right. What, where is, I'm just going back through. Where is the clause about? Original paragraph four, new paragraph seven, um, first sentence perhaps. Uh, so, Edna. Under 7B. 7B, yep. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would move short term rentals and insert the language uh, inclusive of homestays. Okay. Is there a second for that amendment? Second. Jeremy? Um, any discussion on the amendment? No. Okay, let's vote on um, that. I just wanna make sure I'm not missing anything. What, we're just voting on this one amendment at the moment to paragraph 7B, add homestay. Um, and, and that would, I, I suppose, be in the first, pair, the first sentence of 7B after short-term rentals. Mm -hmm. Um, Jamie, did you have something else to add or is your hand still up? Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, Deb, would you please call the, the vote on that amendment? Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Garvin? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Councilor, uh, excuse me, Chairman Adams. Yes. Amendment uh, passes unanimously. Okay. Um, so I think the only other thing, I just want to point this out in case any of you noticed it, because it, it's just a typo. Um, on paragraph 26, there had been a semicolon and I just replaced it with a period. So that was, that was what that amendment was. Didn't remove anything else. Um, so any other discussion on the motion before I open it up for some brief public comment? No, okay. So I, I am gonna open up to public comment. Um, I do would want to remind people to please identify yourself by name and address um, and to please keep your comments within three minutes per person. Um, that's generally what we do for this to, to make sure that everyone gets a chance to speak. Um, so I see Tyler Patterson first. I think no. I'm unmuted. This is John Foltz. Oh, um, Tyler might have taken his hand down. 
Okay. Well, I, I, I'm up to spot, but I'm not Tyler Patterson. I was un, unmuted, so and you might have picked the wrong person. Oh, I'm sorry, thought... John. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop you out of here for a sec. Okay. Here we go. I got Tyler back. Sorry, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Great. Uh, so I'm Tyler Patterson. Um, I'm at 15 Surf Road, where uh, road that uh, backs up to Fort Williams Park. Um, so uh, as I start, first, I want to thank you all for uh, what you're doing, because I know that this is above and beyond probably what you anticipated when you um, signed up for these roles uh, and um, took the position. Um, I don't envy the position you're in at all. Um, I do have to say, though, uh, I'm, I'm disappointed that the public comment is coming after uh, uh, an amendment uh, and, a, and uh, the uh, vote. Um, but just to share my thoughts, I get the sense right now that um, the council is putting the town's responsibility of the park above the responsibility of the well-being of the citizens. Um, what's happening right now with the announcement of schools uh, closing, um, the park closing is you, uh, we are going to have the same behaviors, the same desire, the same drive of people to get out and exercise going into a smaller, denser area, places that don't have the open space places that don't provide the, uh, the distancing that we need. Uh, any of you have been back on Robinson Wood trails in the mud, you'll see this, you'll experience this. Um, uh, and, and perhaps these spaces aren't managed by the town, so they're easier uh, in that way to push people towards that. Um, <laughs> To me, I look at the IGA and I say, actually, that might be the most dangerous place we have in the town um, in terms of people coming together, people uh, catching up, spending time together, groups larger than 10. Um, I, I look at what the, the governor has said, and the governor actually gave guidance for us to do this, to get outside, to exercise, to hike, to run, um, and we're losing the opportunity for that. It seemed that uh, uh, holding back cars from coming into the park and parking could have been a solution and an opportunity. Um, and I heard some of the counselors who were, uh, who were saying that, but the guidance wasn't accepted. Um, I guess at the end of the day, uh, it will also be interesting to understand what's the penalty um, when, when people show up. So what is uh, Chief Fenton gonna do when he finds out that uh, people end up in the park. Um, and so I, uh, these are my thoughts. I'm disappointed. This is, uh, and as Councillor Straw said, this is a blow and a challenge to the well being. Um, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to survive and do the right thing in our homes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and just to clarify, the, so uh, the, motion has not been voted on at this point um the amendments have been voted on but the motion itself has not been voted on typically we open up for discussion prior to to the item um which we did and we didn't have any comment but jamie had a good point that um perhaps people didn't understand that was going to be the opportunity and that's why we're opening this for discussion now um prior to actually voting on the motion um, okay, so I think John Volts was next. Yeah, can you hear me? Yep, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Great. So, um, a, a fair bit to cover. Four things. First of all, um, I want to thank you very much for the, what what you did, and I really um, appreciate the way you considered the action you took respect to closing Fort Williams, and I'll tell you why. I, it, it, the situation we're facing right now with the pandemic is particularly hard for local governments. Um, they're put in a position where what is usually the right and prudent thing to do, which is to go slowly and stepwise, is exactly the wrong thing to do. 
You end up being reactive to the situation and you don't get in front of the pandemic. You're always chasing it. This has been the experience of places around the country and in Italy in particularly in particular. So what you're doing now to take firm action uh, where there are gathering points and getting ahead of what's happening is going to allow you to open the park sooner. Because if you don't, it, everything you do takes longer and longer and longer. And um, so I really appreciate that and encourage you, you're doing the right thing by moving swiftly now to get ahead of this. So I really appreciate that. Um, I also urge you all to be patient because the way this works is the actions you take today and we all take today don't show up in the numbers to a minimum of 10 to 14 days later. So it's gonna seem like nothing's happened, but that's not the way it works. Is there's just a big lag, which makes it additionally hard because no one in the public will see any, any numbers change either as a result of their actions for some time. So I encourage you, move um, uh, strongly and you know, like you have been and be uh, responsive and it's been great. Thank you. The, uh, quickly, if someone could point me to language in the, uh, uh, the ordinance here that ties this to actually some state of emergency, which I didn't see, that I'd appreciate that because um, this is the kind of thing that should only exist while there's a state of emergency and I, di I didn't see the temporary nature of it, so that would be helpful. Um, uh, lastly, with respect to enforcement, um, if you look around the country and around the world, the way the enforcement generally works is they come in with a regulation. There's a period that is informative where they're informing people and educating people about what it is. And then later on, if necessary, it's followed with more severe, very visible enforcement. And think about a signage and PR campaign to help with that organization, particularly in gathering spots, really make a concerted effort because uh, the cheating and the little chipping around the edges of these measures matter a lot. A little bit of cheating means it all lasts way longer and you hit your peak much higher and it lasts much wider. That's what all the modeling shows. So the better we can do this, the better we can get educated, the better we can support Chief Fenton and the uh, police and getting the education and enforcement out there, the better. Thanks again. Also, if you want to change or amend your ordinance to have updated numbers for today, it's 344 cases, seven deaths, 63 hospitalizations as of April 1st. Thank you. Um, regarding the expiration, I did just check the, I, I don't know how that was not incorporated into this draft, but I did check on the um, motion or the regulations that we voted to approve on March 25th, and they did include in the paragraph immediately preceding paragraph one with an expiration date of May 1st, 2020 at 6 p.m. unless otherwise extended by council order. So this is just an amendment to that order. Um, we'll need to, to fix it to make sure that the actual written document does reflect that, but that was what we originally had voted on. So this is just amending that order. Um, all right. So Matt, would you just like to go through and uh, unmute the individuals with their hands raised? I will. Uh, next up is Rebecca Hobbs, Madam Chair. Thank you. Hi there. there. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Uh, this is Rebecca Hobbs. I'm the executive director at Through These Doors. And uh, Through These Doors is a domestic violence resource program that serves Cumberland County. We are, um, in my opinion, privileged to lease uh, space at the park. And it's, um, I didn't realize how much of a personal loss it will be until I listened to this conversation to not be able to go to the park. Uh, it's an amazing place and I love it personally, but I wanted to just um, thank you again for your hard work on this. It's clear that you've really carefully considered all the implications and I share with your, uh, in your concerns with our, uh, you know, the community impact of all of this. So I think it sounds like you are leaning toward making a decision that I would agree with in terms of closing the park. Um, but I would ask you to consider the imp impact on, um, on tenants such as through these doors. We, uh, we don't offer what I think would be deemed an essential service. We've not sought cater categorization in it as such, but um, we use that space at the park to uh, do a lot of our administration and it would be very helpful if we could 
occasionally access that building to write a check or run the payroll or something like that. Um, just speaking for myself, I've been working largely at home and I don't have some of the essential items to be able to run our business. So just please consider that so that we can keep operating remotely. We have 30, uh, 35 staff positions that operate around the state. And what we really want to be able to do is, you know, run our payroll, write an occasional check. We would do that super carefully. We would not wander around the park. So I would ask you to consider your uh, tenants in that way as you make your important decision. Thank you. Next up, Madam Chair, would be uh, Roger Rio. Mr. Rio. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can hear me all right now. By Bridal Pathway. Um, one, I am saddened that the car could be closed, but certainly understand that necessity to do that. I am curious as to how you would have let some people in and others not. That seems like administrative nightmare, but I'll leave that to you. My second comment is $500 for an infraction. Seems like a lot of money. Are we really going to do that? And what if somebody just accidentally violates it and didn't, wasn't aware or whatever, but I'll leave that to you. My third point what may not surprise you is regarding athletic fields, Lions and Playstead. I would ask that you also close that. Technically, they're supposed to be closed for the spring months, but I've seen people open the gates at Playstead. It is posted, sort of, but in the past, we have locked the gates, and I would encourage you to do that. Thank you. Got nothing left. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Hold on, I just want to let this. Sorry, Tyler, I unmuted you by mistake. <laughs> well, you got my thoughts. Sorry. <laughs> uh, next is Cry Swift, Madam Chair. Thank you. Hi, um, this is Cree Swift. I'm at 88 Oakhurst Road. That's okay. Um, and uh, I want to first again uh, thank everyone for working so hard um, in terms of your service to our community and the efforts that you've all put in to communi communicate with us. Um, the Fort Williams to me, and I live within walking distance of Fort Williams, um, is an important place to get outside and it's important to all of us. Um, and many members of our community don't have walking access to woods or other outside areas. Um, so my, although I understand why you're considering closing Fort Williams at this time, um, I think it's really important to think of ways that our community can continue to access the outdoors and Fort Williams is a big part of that. Um, shutting that down, I think hurts our townspeople who have limited opportunities to get outside people who live um, in more dense areas or um, who have uh, physical limitations, uh, people in wheelchairs who can't as easily walk on some of our, or roll on some of our streets that don't have sidewalks. Um, so I think keeping our public spaces open um, can be consistent with the state guidance to stay at home, but also to get some exercise. And if there are other ways to address concerns about congregating, I think it's really important that we explore those first and that, that we really work to maintain access to the outdoors for people. It's so important for our physical and mental health. Thank you. Thank you. Next would be uh, Kristen. Hello. Um, sorry, this is Lucas Homix. Um, I don't know. Can I be heard? Am I heard? Yes. Okay. Um, I've been jotting down notes really fast, and I'm sorry if this comes across a little disjointed, but uh, here goes nothing. Um, thank you for your thoughtful discussion about public space use. I disagree with your assessment of Fort Williams. There is not unlimited space in Cape, and the bottleneck is parking. 
but you never even asked the police chief about enforcing bans about that about the parking. After tonight's vote, what will Winnick Woods parking lot look like? What will Trundy, that neighborhood where you access Trundy, what will those look like? Uh, know our community. Do not react to national trends if it is not re relevant to local actions. Uh, every morning I watch uh, Good Morning America and, and what is sensationalism and what is not. I am not downplaying the relevance of this pandemic. This is serious and everybody has to understand that and everybody has to modify their actions. But if we are simply reacting to fear, that will not help us in the long term. Um, at this level, we can stop, take a deep breath, and make the decisions that are best for our community, not ones that just look good. Remember, neither Dr. Fauci nor Governor Cuomo have shut down Central Park. At least to my knowledge, I would be, if you correct me, fine. Uh, what concerns me more, and what was not discussed tonight, was the loss of two weeks now uh, of a possible chance to make any effort to affect public actions by public awareness. Everything we're doing is talking about making popular decisions to shut things down. We can't shut everything down. The essential services have to be open and the leaks around those services cannot be stopped. But we can try, hopefully, to make some effort to change the way people act with some degree of public awareness. I don't know if the town has the means or the capability to do so, but it should have been discussed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, it looks like we have a couple more comments. I think we're at this point going outside the 15 minutes generally um, available for that. Does any counselor have an issue with extending the period for public comment? No. Okay, um, so I think we'll continue down the list, Matt, please. Uh, this would be Lucille. And just a Can you hear me? Yes, you're good. Lucille Holt Sattery, 11 Cottage Lane in Cape Elizabeth. I um, am two blocks away from Fort Williams. I have to say I walk there every day. Um, and I would love to, first of all, I should really preface this by thanking you all. This is a very difficult topic in a difficult time. Um, and I appreciate all of your service. Um, that said, I'd love you to take some uh, consideration into um, thinking about shutting the park down perhaps for vehicular traffic and also banning parking around the surrounding areas. Um, I would also like to see some public awareness um, about this, um, perhaps putting up the sign that you put up for the Beach to Beacon um, on uh, various streets uh, around our neighborhoods to ban parking. I think not letting the residents of Cape Elizabeth be that we're able to walk there from our homes at this end of town. We can't walk to the other places. They really are further away. We have elderly people who walk there. Um, I, I would love to see um, there be a compromise in this situation, a first step, um, if you might. So I appreciate you all. Thank you very much and um, best of luck. Thank you. And uh, next would be uh, John C. John? Or I cannot seem to unmute. Um, maybe we should move on to Anne and then we'll come back to John and see if okay. we can figure out how to unmute him. Will do, Madam Chair. And, and you should be open. Anne? 
Anne? No. Anne, you are unmuted, but we can't hear you. I don't know if your microphone is down. Not sure. Te technical difficulties. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I don't seem to be able to unmute John, uh, Madam Chair. I'm sorry. All right. So, sorry about that, John and Anne. I don't know if you want to try again, but. Um... Both of them look like they're uh, there. They were unmuted from the administrative perspective, but on their side, on their computer, they still have the mute on. Okay. Um, John or Anne, if you'd like to raise your hand again and try that, um, what you would need to do is after Matt has unmuted, you just unmute yourself. And Anne's open and unmuted. No. I think we're just uh, unfortunately having some technical difficulties with that. So I don't see any other hands of attendees, um, given that we did have quite a bit of input um, before we move on to a vote on the motion. Um, Jamie, I see you have your hand raised and then Jeremy. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the one thing uh, just in response to a couple of the folks that commented and I appreciate everybody's input uh, both tonight and as well as, um, like I said earlier, uh, either in the form of email or direct correspondence with any of us prior to. Um, uh, Dr. Homix earlier um, uh, made reference to New York City and Central Park, and well, I'm pretty sure Central Park hasn't closed. So I think um, there's there's evidence that there's there's consistent movement and momentum in this direction. Um, another point was made by a couple of um, commenters, um, but I'll specifically um, uh, reference uh, Tyler Patterson. Um, I, I, I mean, Tyler, I think you know probably better than anybody else how much it pains me to, to make a recommendation to close Fort Williams. Um, but I also just want to encourage people to understand that there are plenty of other places in Cape Elizabeth in the short term, short term, to exercise and recreate. Um, I understand that some of those might not be as convenient and some of those might be more difficult. Um, but again, what I'm coming to my conclusion on is the advice and direction and guidance that we're now receiving um, as counselors and as a town manager and other staff um, from county and state level emergency management agencies, um, listening to direction out of the governor's office, listening to direction coming from the coronavirus task force in Washington. Um, you know, the recommendation from the, from the county emergency management association um, individual was to close it down. Uh, the recommendation from the governor is to stay home and other than for very brief and specific purposes, not be going out. The recommendation or the guidance uh, on the modeling that we saw yesterday from the coronavirus task force was that these next two weeks, two to three weeks, if we are even to achieve what is an abysmal outcome of potentially 100 to 200,000 Americans dead as a result of this virus, in even order to do that, these next two to three weeks are critical as a means of short circuiting uh, the spread and transmission of the virus. So, uh, you know, a, a, a place like a trail where you might have a handful of people congregating versus a place like a, a major tourist destination park where we're coming into, you know, getting closer to the peak season of when people would be using that for the next couple of weeks. This is, I think, a critical action that we need to take. And I, I understand everybody's appeals to um, walking their dog and having a place for fresh air. I hope that you can get out and enjoy some of the other places responsibly and without, um, you know, without uh, uh, running afoul of the guidance that's been provided to us um, and, and, and really think about, um, you know, we said this at our last meeting last week, be thinking like you have 
and that you already are infected and that you're trying to prevent that from happening to other people versus the mindset of going somewhere and making sure that you don't get it. So this is an action, an action in an area that we have some control over. You know, we don't have control over declaring whether or not the IGA is an essential business or not. That would be in conflict um, uh, with, with the state guidance and direction. Um, but I think this is something where we can make a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy, go ahead. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, and, and thanks to everyone for your comments. Uh, uh, repeating what Jamie said, um, we've got a lot of good comments by email as well as tonight. Um, I would just like to address the point uh, that was raised by the tenant at the park. Um, the, the way that we've currently worded this, it says the provision shall also not apply to businesses designated as essential pursuant to Exhibit A. Um, however, the governor's order um, includes provisions for non-essential businesses to access their place of businesses in a limited fashion. So I would propose um, an amendment to what we voted on for eight to read, the provision shall also not apply to businesses designated as essential pursuant to Exhibit A that are operating in the park or uh, some small and something to the effect of or um, businesses non-essential businesses operating in the park shall have access to their place of business in a manner consistent with the governor's order um, which yeah are you specifically moving that amendment um yeah I'll, I'll i'll make that i'll phrase that as a motion if if that helps move discussion along um Chris, did you have your hand up previously or are you seconding that amendment? I was up previously. Okay, uh, is there a second for um, the amendment? Jamie? I'll second um, and I also have a question. Yes. Um, so I actually wanted to ask, uh, I'm glad that Jeremy, you brought this up and I wanted to ask if, if Matt, I don't know if you can open Ms. Hobbs' um, line again, if that's possible, if she's still on. Um, I am curious what specifically um, the business or organization that um, she's affiliated with is designated as, because I, I was going back and looking at the list uh, from the governor's office of what's essential versus non-essential, and I had shared that around to the council and uh, distributed that to some other places earlier today. Um, but legal business, um, th there's, a, there's a bullet point in there about uh, that essentially encompasses professional services. And I just didn't know if, if Ms. Hobbs's business was qualified as that or behavioral health. And... Rebecca, you're unmuted if you'd like to respond. Oh, great. Um, thank you. And I appreciate taking a little time to talk about that. I, um, you know, when I read the list as well, I was not certain if we are specifically categorized as essential. Um, so I, I wish I could say that for sure. I, you know, the, the provision of support and safety planning to victims of domestic violence sure feels essential to me. And all that I think we would need in that particular office in the fort um, is the occasional opportunity to make sure we can run payroll or get out a check to a vendor or something like that. So. Um, I wish I could answer the, your question about what, how we're categorized. I just don't know. Yeah, um, I had actually, when I, when I drafted it, read this to be an essential business, and I can't remember what the, what the um, wording was that I was looking at exactly, but um, because of the type of services provided, I, I mean, obviously not not giving any legal advice here, but I thought that it had fallen within uh, one of those. Um, but regardless, there is also the gallery, which would be um, non-essential and may also need uh, access to, to her space. So um, it may make sense to have this amendment. Yes, Matt. Uh, Madam Chair, I, I believe we could arrange uh, you know, on a limited basis the ability to get in and to get out. Uh, a lot of the operations there currently have, uh, you know, 
have to operate at times with the gates closed as it is. So um, I think we, we'd be able to arrange, you know, especially for through these doors to get in. Uh, we just have to make sure that we would open the gate, close the gate, and get them in and out uh, successfully. But I think we could work within those confines. And if I could just clarify um, for Ms. Hobbs, you're not actually um, seeing clients there, correct? You're talking about administrative function? Am I unmuted? Oh, thank you. Um, I am. Um, we are not. We never see people who use our services there. The office is generally used for administration and for office space for our educators. So it's, um, yeah, it is not a place in which we meet with people using our services, but it's sort of the, it's sort of the backbone for that, if you will. Thank you. Um, okay, A any other discussion on the amendment? No, okay, I'll let, let's call a vote on the amendment. Deb, if you wouldn't mind, please. Deb, could you just read it back too? Thank you. Okay, it is adding to number eight, uh, and non-essential businesses within the park consistent with the governor's order. Okay. Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Sorry, I was muted. Yes. Councilor Garvin? Uh, yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Adams? Yes. The amendment passes unanimously. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Yes, Chris. Oh. All right. Um, so I wanted to uh, make another amendment. Um, Starting on one, two, three, four, five, on the sixth paragraph, uh, the part that begins with or that ends in orders, um, just it, administrative. Uh, so after orders, I would uh, move that we amend it to state orders, comma, effective April 2nd at 12.01 a.m. with an expiration date of May 1st. Uh, 2020 at 6 p.m. unless otherwise extended by council order. Okay, uh, is there a second for that amendment? I'll second that. Okay, um, any discussion on that amendment? Like I said, that, that should have been there it was a, a typo that is in the original document. So, yes, Councillor Devereaux. Um, no discussion on that, but since we're going to be voting on an amendment, I just wanted to point out that in section five, you have a couple typos in there um, that you might want to clean up. Um, uh, number five in the second line and third line, you have gymnasium, fitness center, and then again, gymnasium, comma, fitness center. So you may want to just clean that up. Um, do we need an amendment for that or can we no, just you're, you're okay that's more of a uh, scrivener's scrivener's issue I, think, I believe I literally uh, copied and pasted so I'm not sure <laughs> what happens um, but you know, pregnancy brain. Um, Chris, uh, yes, does a discussion on the amendment still? Yes. Yeah, so the, the point of it was just um, to say when these aspects, uh, including the proposal, if we vote yes with four rooms, it would go into, into effect uh, basically after midnight tonight is when it would go into effect. And as to the point about it's not going to be ongoing, it would. Uh, the date that I proposed is, I believe, aligned with the expiration date of the original order that we had. Okay. Um, so on the amendment to that uh, first paragraph, Deb, did you get that? Uh, 
Yes, I did. Thank you. Okay. Um, so if we could just call a vote, please. Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Garvin? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Adams? Yes. Passes unanimously. Um, yes, Chris, go ahead. All right, uh, next potential two amendments. Uh, so the first one is, uh, do we need an amendment or is this just enforcing? So I guess it's a question for Matt. Uh, uh, Roger had noted that uh, uh, Playstead Field, there's people out on the field, but the field's supposed to be closed as it is right now. Um, do we need to be amending this to explicitly restrict it? But if the field's already closed, can we just be enforcing the closure and to the extent that would apply to Lions Field as well? Uh, I think it would be enforcing the closure, uh, Councilor Straw. All right, so no need to amend it uh, to encompass those two, it sounds like. All right, uh, so then the, the other was, uh, there was an issue down, uh, and I apologize if I have the wrong location in town, but I thought there was an issue down near the Lobster Shack uh, with the parking lot down there. Um, has that been dealt with or resolved or is that something we'll, we should also be contemplating encompassing with this order? Uh, Chief Fenton can speak to this as well with authority. I know uh, it's it's not our property uh, outside of it being our, our road up until the end, uh, but uh, uh, Chief, if you'd like to provide detail, that would be great too, because I know you've been up to this as well. Yeah, absolutely. We've had a lot of calls down there and obviously that's always been an area, but uh, we're with parking issues and, and whatnot. But uh, in the most recent communication we've had with the Coast Guard, who does own the property, they prefer that we leave it open. Um, and part of their rationale is for turning around of the uh, emergency apparatus, but they also, it's just their, uh, their prerogative to keep it open at this point. So it was closed down briefly uh, by the tenants that were there, uh, but I think they were over uh, overrun by someone of a higher level who's then asked them to remove some, um, some blocking that they had done. So at this point. Uh, in that case, I have no more amendments. Uh, so I just note uh, to Lucas's comment about uh, this being the kind of the popular decision. Uh, my sense is actually the unpopular decision based on the feedback I've heard. Um, I know in my house, it's the unpopular decision with uh, some of my other family members. But um, it's, it's, this is one of those situations where even if the majority of town doesn't want us doing this, um, sometimes we just have to do the right thing um, as best we see it, even if it isn't the popular thing. And that, that, and that is what it is. And that's it. I'm ready to vote. Uh, yes, Matt. Madam Chair, I, I had one other item of, uh, I'd say, bad news as well uh, related to Family Fun Day. I was speaking with uh, Mark Fleming, who's the chair for Family Fun Day uh, earlier in the week. And uh, looking at the timing and the calendar and uh, what we're looking at for a challenge uh, at this year, we're putting Family Fun Day off until next year at this point in time. So uh, the concern is that it's awfully close. Race, uh, you know, larger road races are being canceled uh, left and right or postponed, such as uh, you know, the main uh, Coast Marathon is being canceled outright and that's near to that time period. So uh, the decision was made to, to carry over until next year. And uh, that way we can have hopefully a, a healthier and, and re a much higher level <laughs> reason to celebrate next June. Okay, thanks for the update. Um, all right, is there any more discussion on the motion before we call a vote? Um, all right, Deb, would you mind please calling through? And this is on the motion as amended um, various times. <laughs> okay. Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Garvin? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Adams? Yes. The motion uh, as amended is uh, passed unanimously. Thank you. Okay, so that was the only item on our agenda this evening. I realized um, that I had not opened up to the council for any updates or anything at the at the outset, which we usually do. So, Jamie, I see you have your hand raised. I don't know if that was just something else you wanted to mention. Go ahead. 
Um, I have a question. Um, a citizen reached out to me who operates a, a retail store in town. And um, uh, I don't know, Matt or uh, Chief Fenton, Chief Gleason, if you have any direction on this, but um, most of the discussion that we've seen relative to the governor's order, it's talked about either curbside pickup or delivery, uh, things of that sort, has been in the context of um, food service. Um, and uh, I'm trying to clarify whether or not um, other services uh, that are doing contactless uh, product drop-off are still permitted to operate. So not non-food, but, and it may be something we have to take away to, to investigate further, but if you knew the answer, I just figured I'd throw it out there. Uh, if, if I may, Madam Chair, I, I think that's something we may need to come back uh, for an answer on that, because I think it is fairly, fairly gray as far as uh, where the governor's order is. I think it's, uh, it's not exactly clear, I guess, at this point, I would share that opinion. Uh, the other question I had raised today, too, was um, was from a local contractor regarding uh, uh, landscape services, if it was just one person, and uh, the governor's order was fairly uh, silent on that. So it was a gray area that I think, you know, as, as she goes along and crafts these orders, I think she's trying to close the gray areas. Uh, that that they can. So this may be something to to bring forward to that level, but we we don't have clear guidance on that. Okay. Um, and then the other thing, uh, Chairman Adams, I was just going to raise. Um, so last week, a couple of folks followed up with me afterwards. They weren't clear on um, how many people were participating in um, this, and so I just wanted to make mention that um, at last week's meeting, uh, at peak attendance, we had nearly 60 attendees, in addition to the panelists. Um, we had uh, at peak attendance today more than 60 attendees. So I don't think that the attendees have the ability to see um, who else is here or how many people even. Um, but it, if, if that's the case, if they can't, I just wanted to um, have the public know um, that these are these both of these have been really well attended and, and thank you for their participation. Thanks, Jamie. And just to follow up on uh, the questions um, about the retail business and landscaping. When I was looking at the governor's order earlier, I did notice that on the state website, there is a recommended contact for questions about whether your business falls within essential services. And um, so obviously anything we say is going to be preempted by the state. That might be um, the better place to bring those kinds of questions. Um, okay, any other counselors have any updates or anything before we adjourn. Uh, yes, Councillor Devereaux. I just wanted to mention that um, Maine's Department of uh, Labor has opted in to set a temporary federal unemployment program to provide um, additional relief to Mainers who have been affected by the coronavirus outbreak. Uh, they've expanded eligibility for unemployment benefits, extended enrollment, and um, self-employed Mainers will be able to file under this new program. Matt, we might be able to connect this on our website, but it's, um, the website is main.gov and uh, you go to the agencies tab and it's under Department of Labor is where you can sign up. So um, anybody who falls into those categories should definitely check into that. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you everyone for participating and for the discussion. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn this evening? If we vote on yeah. Was there any public comment not on the agenda that you wanted to wrap up with? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. Um, yes, so we do have an opportunity for public comment not on the for items not on the agenda. If there's anyone who has a comment or a question about something not on the agenda, um, see that we do have one Wayne Brooking. Wayne, you may need to unmute yourself. There you go. Wayne, you're good to go. I think I'm unmuted, am I? Yep, you're good now. I would just like to address um, the issue at the end of Two Lights Road. I would like that the, uh, the town could possibly contact the Coast Guard and request that they close it down. 
As far as uh, what we've been seeing down here, large numbers of out-of-state cars, people are not coming down here to quote, exercise, unquote. They're coming down here to visit, to spend the day, spend several hours picnicking, fishing, scuba diving, which is all, in my opinion, not the spirit of, the, of these orders. And to bring up the issue of uh, being able to turn around, as anyone is familiar down here, that was originally the reason why they kept it open so that fire apparatuses or school buses could turn around if they came down here in the summertime or even uh, uh, fall and winter no one does that the school buses don't turn around down there they turn around in the driveway to the lobster shack the uh, fire apparatuses especially in the summertime when it's busy down here they don't turn around in the parking lot they turn around in the driveway to the lobster shack the lobster shack has closed down their portion of the parking lot um, and we just think it would be appropriate if the uh, Coast Guard closed down theirs. However, they will not do so unless the town requests it. Thank you very much. Thank you. John? Um, Can you hear me? Yep. Just a brief comment. Um, th thank you again. The news story coming out of this is going to be the closure of, of Fort Williams. This is an opportunity for you all to get your messaging out that you want on your order, wording and your order. So I'd particularly encourage Matt um, uh, Sturgis and uh, Chief Fenton and uh, Ch Chairwoman a Adams to think carefully about exactly what messaging you want to get to the press who's going to cover the result of this meeting. This is our opportunity to really um, boost the messaging on enforcement and try and get compliance as good as we can get. So so that we can open up things faster. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. I don't see any other public comment, so. Um, all right. Uh, did anyone have a response to, to Wayne Brookings, Chief? Did you have a response to that? Yeah, I can absolutely see Wayne's perspective. And like I said, I was just getting direction from the Coast Guard. I can try to reach out to the powers that be and get something else. I would just like something formal from them, like the state parks did. Um, you know, we are assisting them as well with limiting people down there. But um, I, I can try to reach back out to them again and see if they will look at this topic again. Thank you. OK. Um, now do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Caitlin, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Jeremy, thank you. Um, any discussion before we adjourn here? No? All right. All, all in favor? Um, I think we'll have to call through again. Councillor Devereaux? Yes. Councillor Gabrielson? Yes. Councillor Garvin? Yes. Councillor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councillor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councillor Straw? Yes. Chairman Adams? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Deb, for your calling through everything. And thanks, everyone, again. Have a good night. Thanks, all. Take care. Thanks.